Kerik, son of Yargmoth, versus Aloro, ageless ascetic, Zergo, helm smasher, and Sliver, overlord. Let's keep this one. We've got plenty of mana. Gauntlet of power gives us scope for even more mana. Mystical Tutor for Aloro. Already going for their control cards, I imagine. Going after a Limdul's Vault off of the Mystical Tutor. They will draw into that next turn. We'll just hold up Vampiric Tutor. I don't think we'll be using Vampiric Tutor, but if any of our opponents go crazy, then we'll want to have that option available. Limdul's Vault being cast during Aloro's main phase. You can look at the top five cards, and as many times as you choose, pay a life to put them on the bottom, and then look at the top five again. And then once you've decided on the top five that you like, you can reorganise those. Now looking at my hand here, I was tempted to go for Urborg if I was going to tutor, but I think I'm actually going to go after a Sol Ring here, because we can go Sol Ring, read the bones, and it just helps us along a little bit. It does mean that we're going faster than our opponents, and that's not necessarily a good thing, but yeah, I like going for this. Read the bones is scry two, draw two, and lose two life. Uh, and I like both of those cards, so let's put the Alhamrit's Archive and the Swamp on top. Felwar Stone for the Sliver Overlord. So they are slowly making their way up to five colours. A Burnished Heart for Zergo Helm Smasher, followed by Ristic Study for Aloro. Yeah, I really don't like playing against Ristic Study. That's probably what they were aiming for with the Limdol's Vault. Let's get down a Swamp, and we'll go in for the Gauntlet of Power. Going to have to give the Aloro player a card draw. Really don't like giving Ristic Study players card draw, but yeah, Aloro is doing really well already. Managing to get some really good card filtering on the go. And we're also giving Aloro additional mana with their basic Swamp, so... Hopefully they won't make too much use of that. This is a Doomsday deck that I have constructed. I didn't want to make it too similar to uh, Yargmoth or Vilis. And although they are different decks, they have a lot of similar themes. Uh, this one is pretty much Life Gain and Doomsday. We want to get into the Doomsday combo, which is Ether Flux Reservoir. A Sack Outlet, preferably Phyrexian Arena. And then the Carrion Feeder and Grave Crawler. So Grave Crawler can be cast infinitely in that case. Basil Sliver did come down for the Sliver player. And they did put a mana into the Ristic Study. Uh, but the Swiftfoot Boots coming down did not get a Ristic Study mana put into it. So that is two cards that Ristic Study has drawn already, once from us and once from Zergo. And then the Burnished Heart going in at Aloro. They gain two life at the beginning of their upkeep. And with six cards in hand, deciding to tap out. We have a Jet Medallion there. Let's go for the Cabal Coffers. Then we can go Jet Medallion. And we will put the Floating Mana into Ristic Study. Then let's see if we can get some removal out of our opponent's hand. Going to put six life into our commander. And then tap a couple of lands. And that will leave us with a floating mana for the Ristic Study. And Zergo, in response to all that, is cracking the Burnished Heart and going for some basics, putting them straight into play tapped. Down comes our commander. We have no protection for that, so I... Imagine that it might eat some removal by the time we get round to our turn again. But the Basil Sliver going in at Aloro again. So it looks like our opponents are focused very much on Aloro, which is good for us. Only problem is that we're against a control player as well, and if we're going for the Doomsday combo, that is a really fragile combo, and if we get any of it disrupted, 
then that is really going to mean that we, well, we lose the game automatically pretty much. Because Doomsday does have us deck ourselves. A Consecrated Sphinx, that is really good, with a Ristic Study in play. Assuming that people don't pay for Ristic Study. We'll see if Zergo is the type of player to pay into the Ristic Study. Consecrated Sphinx has already drawn our opponent a couple of cards at the beginning of Zergo's turn. And down comes our opponent's commander. That does have haste, so it only needs to hit our opponent three times. It doesn't matter how much life they gain. Zergo can take them down to commander damage. And Zergo allowing the Aloro player to draw again, which allows the Sliver player to draw two. So I'm not sure about that. Let's see what they do with the rest of their mana. They've got three mana held up. And I'm not so sure that they should have been desperate to put Swiftfoot Boots onto their commander because there is a Kerrick and a Consecrated Sphinx in play. Okay, well that's a good combination of cards. I'm not sure I would have fed my opponents so much card draw in order to get it going. But Zergo is now indestructible with Hexproof and Haste. And going in at Aloro. Aloro's taken a lot of heat away from us. And that's good because we don't have a lot of stuff in hand currently. The Sliver player going all the way up to 12 cards now. Elspeth Sun's champion comes down and creates some tokens. That should create some distance between our opponent's creatures and Aloro. Although the Consecrated Sphinx can fly straight over and whack Elspeth. And they'll likely want to do that because she can also wipe the board of creatures with power 4 or greater. Yeah, we're not really getting into anything here, unfortunately. Let's just get down this Alhamrit's archive and hopefully we can get some card draw on the go. And just for the sake of doing something, we'll go for the Grey Merchant of Asphodel as well. I think we're at a point now where people might want to start wiping the board. So there we go, we jump up to 60 life, we gain double the life, uh, draining each of our opponents for 5 which means we get 10 life from each of our opponents. And yeah, we can leave the turn like that, I think. In fact, let's show all of our opponents that we are also focused on Aloro, and we'll go after the Elspeth Sun's champion. They can chump with a soldier. But we're just showing our opponents that we care about getting rid of Aloro as well. They are indeed chumping with a soldier, so we gain... 4 life, but 4 life doubled up thanks to our Hamrit's archive, so even if we're not benefiting from the double card draw, we are benefiting from the double life gain. The Consecrated Sphinx going in at us. Uh, yeah, knocking us from 68 down to 64 doesn't seem all that good a plan. Elspeth, Sun's champion, is likely going to be getting rid of your Consecrated Sphinx next turn. Maybe our opponent doesn't care about that. Yeah, was really relying on Consecrated Sphinx to go over at Elspeth there. So now it will also get rid of our Kerrick, son of Yargmoth. And they'll keep their Elspeth in play as well. At least they're paying into the Ristic Study. They haven't drawn an additional card since their last turn. And a Mana Weft Sliver coming down as well. Slivers you control can tap to add one mana of any colour. But before the Sphinx gets blown up, it is going to continue to draw our opponent more cards. They have discarded a Sedge Sliver. Some lands. They actually don't have red lands in place, so I'm surprised they're discarding those. Uh, there's a Condor's Banner as well. Discarded those down to hand size. Rogue's Passage is now in play as well. I don't know if that was in play previously, but I missed it if it was. So, Zergo can still get through to any player on the table. And I wonder, with us gaining so much life, if the attention shifts over to us. But with a true conviction on the field, Zergo can actually take Aloro out of the game here. Might be worth us going for the Mutilate next turn. Because that will get rid of Zergo. And it will put a plus counter on Kerrick, which will leave him in play. Because Mutilate will be minus four, minus four, unless we drop another swamp. And Zergo, oh, that is very surprising. 
Zergo deciding to go in at Sliver Overlord, I would think they definitely want to get rid of Aloro. Apparently not. Yeah, some questionable decisions going on here. I'm really not sure why our opponent would spread the damage at this point. Giving Aloro more time is not really something you want to be doing. They did make the uh, Zergo unblockable with the Rogue's Passage there, by the way, which is why there were no blocks that occurred with the Sliver Overlord. Elspeth Sun's champion decided to tick up, so we will not be losing any creatures. Dairu, Diru, I don't know how you say that, with eyes open. Uh, when it enters, search your library for a Planeswalker, reveal it, put it into your hand. If a source would deal damage to a Planeswalker you control, prevent one of that damage. So, looks like this may well be Super Friends Aloro. And they've put Kaya, Bane of the Dead, into hand. Can exile a creature with that. Oh, Yogmoth's Will is not terrible at all because we can go for Read the Bones and Vampiric Tutor with that. Might be worth going for the combo, actually. Uh, let me think about the combo here. Let's go for Reliquary Tower. Okay, let's go for the Yogmoth's Will. All right, a Vampiric Tutor going to put something on top here for the Aloro player. And we are certainly not going to let them draw into whatever they tutored for. So we're going to have to start paying some life here. Luckily we have plenty of life. Yogmoth's Will will allow us to go for Vampiric Tutor. And we'll put Mana into the Rhystic Study again. We want to go for Doomsday. And it's risky going for it now because Aloro might have just gone for Counter Magic. But just going to go for it. Two life and two mana into Read the Bones. Uh, mana Crypt. I don't think we need Mana Crypt, so let's put that on the bottom. Doomsday obviously goes on top. We give Consecrated Sphinx a lot, a lot of cards. Uh, let's go for... Oh, can we go for the combo right now? We've luckily drawn into Infernal Contract. Oh, but actually that doesn't help us with Doomsday, does it? Because of the Alhamrit's uh, Archive, that's a non-bo. So let's go for the card draw right now, before we exile our entire library. Again, putting mana into Rhystic Study. And I'm just wondering now if we even want to go for the combo here. Because we've got a hell of a lot of card advantage here. And I'm really liking Massacre Worm. Yeah, let's go for Massacre Worm and get rid of some of our opponent's stuff. Again, putting mana into the study. And if we go for Toxic Deluge, which I think we might do, then I don't think we're going to put mana into the study again. Massacre Worm will give minus two, minus two to everything. And the Sliver Player sacrifice their mana weft so that they wouldn't lose life to the massacre worm here and then we can go minus four to get rid of the consecrated sphinx and that will keep our creatures in play oh and it'll actually cost one less to do this won't it thanks to the jet medallion so we will have mana for the rhystic study so our opponent has not drawn one additional card through all of this now, unfortunately, don't have a Lightning Greaves or a Swiftfoot Boots in play. But I don't think we could have taken out the Aloro player anyway. Okay, down comes Notion Thief. Even more card draw for the Sliver player. They've got 38 cards in hand and 43 cards in the library. They don't have the mana to go with it, though, so that's not necessarily the most frightening thing. Yeah, Doomsday is really something that I'd like to get going in this deck, but there's a few nombos like... Uh, if we have Phyrexian Arena, we have to play around that. And Alhamrit's Archive, we have to play around as well. The deck list is in the description, and the combo is explained there for anyone who cares. Uh, no point swinging in with the Grey Merchant, because it doesn't have any power, so we will just get rid of Elspeth from our opponent and gain some life. And then we've got an infinite hand size, so no need to discard down to hand size, I think... Our opponents might feel as though there is a new enemy at the table. I can't remember. I've recorded a few videos with Kerrick now, just trying to get used to it. And I can't remember if I've explained the combo now. 
but it's basically we want to get down Doomsday and go for a package like Aetherflux Reservoir, Carrion Feeder and Grave Crawler and just cast those infinitely and gain infinite life. Okay, Harmonic Sliver coming down. Let's see what that is going to be pointed at. That went to the Ristic Study, that is the correct play. Now there's an argument to be made for our Gauntlet of Power and our Hamrit's Archive, but Ristic Study is definitely the thing to go for. Our opponent duly paying respect to the Ristic Study. Followed by a Hollowhead Sliver. And that blows up our Hamrit's Archive, which is... Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, this is tap, discard a card, draw a card, so rummage. They don't have haste on their slivers yet. Might have been worth them keeping the Alhamrit's Archive in play, actually, because they do have Notion Thief. But they've also got 37 cards in hand, so I don't suppose they want to draw any more. And there is a Haste Enabler. All slivers have haste. And going after the True Conviction, which, again, is the right call. So we've got a capable player on our hands by the looks of it. And another sliver coming into play that probably goes after our gauntlet. And yep, yeah, yeah, again, the right play by our opponent. Yeah, getting rid of the harmonic sliver would be really good. I think we could have tapped for mana from the toxic deluge better. I don't know if I paid life for that. I might have misplayed that because we could have held up Doomblade. And there is the Wrath. Destroy all creatures that aren't enchanted. They can't be regenerated. So our opponent is going to start rummaging in response to all of that. Let's see what they're discarding. Discarding a coat of arms. A pulmonic sliver. And that is all they decided to discard. They must really like everything that's in their hand. And the Massacre Worm does trigger a bunch of times for the sliver player. They are down to 5 life now. And now that Al Hamrit's archive is gone, it might actually be worth us trying to get this Doomsday combo going. Doomsday and Bolus's Citadel will allow us to do it immediately. Do we have the mana to do it is the question. Okay, Ugin the Ineffable makes colourless spells our opponent's cast cost two generic less to cast. And then going for exiling the top card of the library and getting a spirit token into play. It is now our turn, we will drop the Urborg. And if we're going for the combo now, I think, yeah, I think we're looking pretty good here. Uh, let's go for the Inquisition onto Aloro, and we'll see if they have counter magic. No blue spells in hand whatsoever. So yeah, that is no problem. We cannot have them discard anything, but at least we know we've got free reign now. Unless the Sliver player has counter magic in the deck. I imagine they would have discarded some by now if they had any. No, it doesn't look like they run counter magic. They wouldn't necessarily have discarded it, but... No, there's no sign of control there whatsoever. We'll get down the Bolus's Citadel. There is a land on top. Yeah, I've been pretty unlucky with Bolus's Citadel recently. So in that case, we will go for Doomsday. And we'll try and get the combo going here. We want Carrion Feeder, Aetherflux Reservoir, Grave Crawler, the Phyrexian Altar, and we'll take a Blood Artist as well, just to speed things up. Now we're just hoping the Zergo player does not have any instant speed interaction with us. Let's go Grave Crawler, Carrion Feeder, Phyrexian Altar. Uh, we want the Ether Flux Reservoir out first, so we'll go Blood Artist and Ether Flux. We can cast cards off the top with Bolus's Citadel by paying life for those, so let's get down the Ether Flux Reservoir first. Then we'll go for the Blood Artist, and we will gain a life for each spell we've cast this turn, so that is one from the Ether Flux Reservoir. Three life to cast the Phyrexian Altar, but we'll gain two from the Ether Flux Reservoir. Then we go Carrion Feeder and Grave Crawler. And that is us with an empty library. If our opponents can't do anything here, then that is us in the clear to win this game. 
We sacrifice the Grave Crawler Sliver. Decides to fold there. They shouldn't do because they don't know if Zergo has any interaction here. We'll aim the Blood Artist at the Aloro player. And because we control a zombie and we've got a black mana, we can go for the Grave Crawler. That does count as being cast, so we gain life from Ether Flux Reservoir. Aloro deciding to scoop as well. Again, they don't know if Zergo has interaction. But we will sacrifice the Grave Crawler, point the Blood Artist at our opponent. And we're up to 49 life. Don't have quite enough to take out our opponent here. But I assume they would have done something about this combo now if they had anything for us. So, yeah, it's likely that we're winning this one now. There we go. We're up to 61 life. And all we have to do is pay 50 life to deal 50 damage to our opponent with Ether Flux Reservoir. And there we go. Managed to get the Doomsday combo off with our commander. I think that ought to be a last ditch effort to win the game with this commander because if you don't win with that combo as soon as you show it to everybody then you're likely going to lose the game. In fact after you've cast Doomsday for that combo you are going to lose the game because you're probably going to draw into an empty library with your library being exiled. So just something to consider, I just wanted to show all of you that combo. We can also win by going for Aristocrat effects and winning in combat as long as we sit back a little bit. There aren't too many big creatures in the deck. Um, I had to cut them to try and get some more control aspects like looking at our opponent's hand with an Inquisition of Kozilek like we saw on the Aloro player just there to check if we had free reign. I'll be sure to get more carrot games out there if you want to see them. Hopefully you've enjoyed this first commander from the Commander 2019 set. Let me know what you think of it. I'm Tribal Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.